Would you like to know the difference between a web application firewall called WAF or a next generation firewall for your security architecture or your cloud security architecture? If so, this video is for you. So the first thing we're going to do is describe how a traditional firewall works and what is a next generation firewall. And then we'll talk about WAF and then we'll talk about which is right for you. Should you use WAF? Should you use a next generation firewall or should you use both? So let's begin discussing the way a traditional firewall works and uh, their capabilities. So for the most part, all firewalls for the last number of years are what's called stateful. So we'll show you what we mean by that. We'll place the firewall over here. We will place uh, the internet over here and we'll actually place a little web server on the internet to, to show how a firewall works. So here what we have is we have a user the user is protected by their firewall and they're going to the Tuna website. In this case, the user is my cat, Cindy. She is a, a Tuna connoisseur. She loves Tuna. So Cindy decides that she's going to take my credit card and she's going to go to the Tuna website and she's going to buy Tuna. So Cindy goes to her internet browser. Her computer sees that as a default route. The default route points to the firewall. The firewall NATs or gives me a temporary public IP address to go to the internet. And the firewall creates a table entry that says Cindy the cat is going to the website, Tuna website, whatever that may be. Now, if it's an HTTP website, Cindy will send a SIN to open a connection with the website. And what will happen is the website's going to respond to Cindy's connection request. The website will acknowledge Cindy SIN or uh, open a connection, a TCP connection. Uh, then uh, the uh, Tuna website will send a SIN to Cindy to open up a connection with her so they can have a con an exchange of data going back and forth. And the message goes from the Tuna website. It hits the firewall and the firewall says, okay, the Tuna website is going back to Cindy. Cindy initiated the connection, so therefore allow her, her traffic back from the Tuna website. The firewall kept track of Cindy's traffic, so it knew that Cindy was going to the Tuna website and it enabled the Tuna's website traffic to go back. Now, by comparison, if we had a hacker on the internet and the hacker tried to get to, to, to connect to Cindy, what should happen is the firewall, assuming that it will be, work on its base policy, but by default will not block and deny all incoming connections. So the hacker can't get to Cindy, but Cindy can go to the Tuna website and then back. And the reason she can go to the Tuna website and back is because the firewall keeps track or keeps state. Now with modern, uh, website technology and with modern next generation firewalls, we can have uh, some intrusion detection, we can have some behavioral detection, and we can do things to make the network self heal itself. So for example, what could be going on here is the firewall may have some AI, uh, for example, going on or, or machine learning going on. And what's going to happen is the firewall is going to start looking for patterns of behavior that are coming at it, either Cindy going out or coming in or what have you. And if it senses an anomaly, the firewall can immediately stop it with its intrusion detection, intrusion prevention. Maybe it creates an access list on demand. Maybe it resets a TCP connection, but there's a lot of things that it can actually do. So that's what a next generation firewall does. Next generation firewalls can inspect traffic at any layer they want, three, four, seven, what actually have you. So that is the basis of a traditional firewall and even firewall. a firewall. So what is the next generation firewall doing? It's protecting the entire enterprise that's behind the firewall. We may get uh, antivirus protection with this, deep packet inspection, identity awareness, any kind of machine learning uh, or AI model, detect behavioral detection and stopping of things, network address translation, port address translation, packet filtering, maybe even SSL decryption on this device. We could potentially do some VPNs. And uh, so there's a lot we're gonna do on our next generation firewall. And the next generation firewall gives us full stack visibility. We've got the most administrative control. We create an extremely high level of security. And these typically meet stringent compliance standards. Now, 
We typically have to buy these. They're typically a little more expensive than a web application firewall. But these are designed to basically provide security for everything. And they're darn good at what they do. Now we get to a web application firewall that's specifically designed to protect web applications. And these are layer seven firewalls that are very good at looking at web applications and securing web applications. These web application firewalls act as a shield between the uh, web application themselves and the external users. Now uh, we can detect a lot of web specific attacks with these types of things. Unauthorized access is typically blocked. Um, we make sure there's no sensitive information that's being lost. The web coding errors are easily picked up and detected. So it prevents things like cross-site scripting attacks and other things. And typically with a web application firewall, it can handle a lot of web connections very quickly. So the web application firewall is specifically designed for web applications and it does web applications better in some cases than a next generation firewall, but it doesn't provide that overall level of protection. So if we think of a web application firewall, it's often used as a second line of defense. It enables very nimble reaction to threats. It discovers code errors with even without accessing even the source code. So there's a lot of good with web application firewalls. Now we may have some app incompatibility, we may have some other challenges, but web application firewalls are great at what they do. So the difference between a next generation firewall, a full capability next generation firewall and a true WAF is that the next generation firewall secure the entire corporate network. They defend against all kinds of threats, whether they're, where, they, where, where they're coming from, whether they be based on apps, ports, protocols, everything where web application firewalls focus solely on safeguarding a web application from specific targeted web attacks. Now, not all web application firewalls are the same. There are some that are very adaptive in nature. There are often others by cloud providers that are more signature based and less adaptive. So not all WAFs are created equal. You'll have to choose the enterprise WAF or whatever WAF is needed for your environment. So do you choose a WAF solution or do you choose a next generation firewall? If it matters, you use both because your next generation firewall gives you good enterprise grade protection. And then you can use that WAF as a backup, some specific protection for your actual web applications. And that'll give you a layered security approach, which will give you a much more comprehensive approach to security for your web based applications. If you want to become a security architect, a cloud architect, a cloud security architect, an AI architect, or an enterprise architect, we've got programs as well as free webinars and free documents to assist you in your architecture career. You can register for a free webinar where we'll talk about how to become an architect, the skills you'll need for the architecture role of your choosing, and then we typically spend 60 to 90 minutes answering any kind of architecture career questions you may have for cloud architect, enterprise architect, security architect, AI architect, or any architect career for that matter. In the description of this video, we have many guides for you that I'd love you to get a hold of, guides on how to win the interview, guides on how to get an architecture job, and it's all free. So join us in our free webinar or a free uh, ebook, and they're all in the description of this video. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell to be notified of new videos. And please leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought of the video, where you're going in your career, because we'd love to do anything we can to assist you. We'd love to know more about you. This is Mike Gibbs signing off for now, and I look forward to seeing you in another YouTube video or one of our cloud architect, AI architect, security architect, or enterprise architect webinars. Take care and have a wonderful day.